Hi everybody, this is Terry Doherty and I'm in the Mom's Choice Awards filming studio at VEA 2014 and I'm here this afternoon with Angie Wilson, the author of Dory's Gift. Welcome to the studio. Well, thank you. It's is very this your nice first VEA? Yes, it is. How's it been so far? Oh, it's fantastic. I, I can tell by the <laughs> glare in your eyes. It's like, wow, it's, it's so cool. Where do I go next? Exactly. You know? <laughs> well, let's go back to Dory's Gift. Tell me a little bit about how you came to write Dory's Gift. Well, a few years ago, I uh, watched a documentary on Appalachia. It was a very negative portrayal of the whole region. And you talked a lot about the poverty, and I'm not denying that. I know there's poverty. But I started thinking, of, after that show, I started thinking about stories that my family had, you know, passed down to me. And, you know, they weren't rich or wealthy, but yet they had such good stories to tell. You know, it wasn't anything negative growing up in the mountains. It was, uh, it was positive. So I wanted to share some good stories of family times in the mountains. Now, do you have a special memory of sharing the book, you know, that said, you know, oh, wow, this is why I wrote this book. I mean, has anybody brought you those kinds of stories? Well, you know, I read it uh, not too long ago to actually a group of adults at a bookstore. What a wonderful you know? idea. And um, some of them were brought to tears just because it brought back memories from their childhood and, you know, their grandparents that had passed and, and they were brought to tears by the story. And it was just a special moment. That's neat. Mm -hmm. That really makes it, oh, I get, I get goosebumps. <laughs> Having lived in West Virginia, I know how precious and how important quilts are to the culture of the region. And it really is something that you hand down from generation to generation. I have the quilts Absolutely. my dad bought for my mom. Mm -hmm. Did you, I saw that there were several quilts in Dory's gift. How do you use them, excuse the pun, weave them into the story? <laughs> um, well, there were several quilts that my grandmother and my great-grandmother had made and I took pictures of those and I sent them to the illustrator and I wanted those particular quilts in the story. So when I go to the schools and I talk with the children, I always take those quilts with me and show them the pictures and you know, tell them even the story of the quilts. I had um, one lady at one of the schools that was a quilt reader that would look at a quilt and she could read the pattern and know a lot about the time period just by looking at the pattern and the way it wow. was made. Yeah, so it's really amazing, the stories that are in quilts alone. So That's kids neat. are really amazed by that, and they, they get so excited when they see the quilt, and then, oh, there it is, I actually see it in the story. That's cool. <laughs> it is. <laughs> now, you said, you told me earlier when we were off camera that you're a teacher. I mean, how much of that was sort of sitting in the back of your mind as you were pulling the family stories together into an award-winning book? Probably a lot, you know, especially I wanted to pull in some vocabulary words that teachers could pull out when they read. <laughs> um, and two, I wanted to kind of line it up where teachers can use it, you know, and read the book and then teach a whole unit on, you know, life in the Appalachians and, you know, a lot of the history that came over with the Scots-Irish settlers and it's still in the region, you know, even today, yes, it was, they were so isolated. So. And, um, and it's just a lot of things that we can bring in like that, as well as the time era history. Now, you were talking earlier, one of the things we were talking about was um, what's next for Dory's Guide? You know, are, you're talking about using it in the classroom. Do you have guides or activities that can help teachers who are interested in using the book or librarians interested in using the book? Actually, yes. The, the illustrator, Ashley Teets and I, we are working on getting a book out that is a children's activity book that has some coloring pages, but it's also a teacher workbook. And it will Excellent. have lesson plans and graphic organizers and things that teachers can use that are common core aligned that they can use in their classrooms. Or homeschooling, it sounds like. Yes. You know, we were talking earlier about storytelling. And you know, this is a, the age of storytelling kind of thing, you know, generational stories passed down. Obviously, that was your family members to you. How do you see this used with a broader group? Do you see people sharing it together like they did, in, like you did in Barnes and Noble with other with kids? How would you do that? Well, it I've shared it, you know, in schools. I've shared it with many different students, and you know, we teach a lot of the history of the region as it is shared, and students. Um, you know, they just learned so much, not only of, of the regional history, but just the time period and how that things were so different 
you know, life without electricity was so different from what it is today. And so they've really enjoyed it and it's just, they've learned a lot from it, just from that. <laughs> well, congratulations on your Mom's Choice Award. Thank you so much. And I'm so glad you're here with us this year at BEA. Have a great show. Thank you. <laughs>